What's going on guys? Jared back again on Keystone Carry. I've been out exploring all day, doing some photos, having some fun in the Jeep. As you can see, this thing is kind of covered in mud. But this week I got a ton of questions about the intercooler setup on my Jeep and I did everything I needed to do today. So I figured a quick little five minute video is in order to kind of show you guys what I did with the intercooler. And as many of you know, with my 99 XJ, I did a diesel conversion. So let's pop the hood real quick. If you haven't seen my other video, I have two videos, give me a second. Two videos where I discuss the diesel swap and kind of go into the details of what I did. I'll try to do this one-handed. Hang on a second. So I have two different videos kind of doing an overview of what I did to this Jeep. I have one where I had the original adapter kit and it was horrible. And unfortunately that video has a ton of views and a lot of you have used it as a reference. Um, good for you because doing a diesel swap is awesome. Bad because I would not recommend the company that I used initially for the adapter kit. Then I did a follow-up video with Doomsday Diesel, the adapter kit that I currently have in this Jeep, and it's working out phenomenally. But guys, I put an OM617 turbo diesel engine in it, got a bunch of mods to it, all this other stuff. I will do an update video. I've said that probably a thousand times over the last year, and it's just never happened, unfortunately. I've just got a lot going on. Um, but here is the Jeep. This is the OM617. Uh, just real quick, um, this is out of a 1985 300D. I do have an HX35 turbocharger, ARP stud kit, ported head, ported intake, ported exhaust. Um, did all of this stuff myself. And there's a lot going on here that I'll talk about at some other time. But today I wanted to focus on this gem, the front mount intercooler. There's a lot of people that when they get into a diesel swap, they're wondering, what do I do with this or this or that or whatever, AC, maybe it's power steering, maybe it's whatever other accessory. And the intercooler is extremely important. The OM617 did not have an intercooler from factory. It just, the turbocharger dumped right into the intake and that's fine, it was under fueled from factory. It didn't really have hot EGTs or anything like that. But if you do the 7.5 millimeter pump like I did, an intercooler is necessary. It's not even an option, you have to do it. You will destroy your engine if you don't. So now that gets us to this point where we're like, okay, so what do we do with a vehicle like this that has a very narrow front end? Um, and Cherokees, that's like the downside of swapping these. The front end is extremely narrow. As many of you know, the radiator system on a Cherokee is marginal at best, even factory. So, you know, putting an intercooler in front of it, that's one of the negatives, is now you're blocking even more airflow. There's a couple options here when you're doing a diesel conversion on a Jeep. A lot of my buddies kind of cleared out all of this wiring and all this area here over top of the turbo, and they will do a top mount intercooler right here. And if you do that, you really need to do a hood scoop because you need airflow. Downside of that and why I didn't want to do that is now you're sitting directly on top of a turbocharger. So you're gonna have a lot of heat soak. The other option, which is a little bit more complex, would be kind of using this area or using somewhere else for an air water intercooler. One of my friends, Michael Anderson, who has a group that you should be a part of if you wanna do an OM617 swap. It is on Facebook, OM617 swaps, I think is what it's called. He did an air water conversion up in here. Now for me, I didn't really want to get into air water. I really wanted to keep it simple. So a front mount to me seemed like the best option. There's a lot of stuff involved in that and I didn't realize how complex that was gonna get, but it does work, it fits, but I had to move the radiator and do a lot of stuff. So I'm gonna just take the camera and get really close to the front end here and show you guys a little bit about what I did. Um, Let's just go right here. So hopefully you guys can see there. So this intercooler I purchased off of eBay or something like that. 
I think it's just an off brand. It's about 28 inches, I think, long, but I'll, I'll confirm that and I'll put that in the description. But essentially, this intercooler has an outlet here and an outlet here. And with the Cherokees, the headlight bezel is a real limiting factor. There's really not much you can do here. As you can kind of see in the back, right in there, the radiator blocks any passage behind there. So you gotta get a little bit creative. So what we did was we pie cut a bunch of pipe here. I think it's just a stainless sort of, you know, exhaust pipe or something like that. Did a bunch of pie cuts and returned them down. And we actually cut a section Hopefully you guys can see. Let me just adjust the ISO here. So we actually cut a section here out of the cross member that ties the unibody together, the radiator support I should call it. Um, so that's what we had to do to get the intercooler pipes through there. Over here on this end as well, I also, look. We'll finish this up when the train's gone. Okay guys, the train just passed by, so I'm gonna continue talking and explaining this to you guys. So with that intercooler being up front, there's a couple pros and there's a couple cons to doing it like that. I would say the simplest version would kind of be like the Subaru style top mount intercooler that you'll see on some different models of Subarus throughout the years. Um, just kind of mounting that from you know a boot to the intake and then a boot to the charge port on the turbocharger on the compressor side, but the problem again that I said with that that I don't like is you need a hood scoop. Um, sometimes you need fans to pull air through it. You're just not gonna get the airflow, in my opinion, that you would get from a front mount. So that's the big benefit here with the front mount is I have constant airflow through the radiator, through the intercooler. And when I have my fans on, because it's in front of my radiator, I'm pulling even more cold air through that intercooler. And with a temp probe, I did notice a ton of decrease in temperatures on my charge side. Now, the downside of putting it in front of the radiator is, as I said, the Cherokee is already super narrow. So now I'm adding more stuff in front of my radiator, including the piping. As you saw, the piping kind of comes out the sides of the intercooler and then wraps around the bottom, comes underneath the radiator support, goes up behind the fans, and then it goes into the compressor side of the turbo and then into the intake. The downside about my setup is there's a ton of elbows. So I guarantee you I'm losing a lot of efficiency in my flow, but it's kind of a give and take. I'm not a professional and I'm kind of working with what I've got. Sometimes when you're doing a swap like this, you kind of just start and you have to kind of finish what you started and then you'll realize what maybe isn't the best and then you move forward from there. Um, but let's go in the engine bay. I'm gonna show you guys how the pipes are out. And I guess one last thing is you could do the air water like I talked about. The downside of that is now you have a whole different system. And for me, the air water was kind of eh, too complex for what I wanted. I wanted something simpler. So for me personally, if I was gonna recommend something to you, I would say if it is a daily driver rig on the road a lot, I would say a top mount would be fine as long as you have a lot of airflow. Um, if you're gonna be off-roading at all, or you're gonna have minimal airflow, or you live in an area with high temps, I would say the front mount's probably your best bet. And air water would probably, in some situations, be better than both, but you're gonna have complexity and cost added in there as well. So if you have a welder, you can TIG weld, MIG weld, whatever, you have pipes and basic tools, doing a front mount's pretty straightforward, and I'm gonna show you how the pipes look inside the engine bay real quick. So as I stated, it goes through the radiator support. This is the charge side off the compressor side of the turbocharger. It goes down, we go through the intercooler, do all that jazz over here, come back down, and now we're going into the intake side there. Now on the OM617 from factory, the turbocharger would push air into this inlet. Now we TIG welded an aluminum piece here to cover that off. I have an EGR block off kit here as well. And then we added a piece of pipe right here that we TIG welded on for the boot going into the intake. So if you wanna do something like this or any intercooler, you're gonna to have to modify 
your intake on the OM617 because like I said, from factory, they were non-intercooled. So as you guys can see, it's not like 100% straightforward. Uh, I did fit this into the front of my Jeep. I did space the radiator back a little bit and I am running a Mishimoto oversized radiator. So I know there's a lot of questions about what can you fit, what can you do? If you run a front mount intercooler on a Cherokee, 100% you're gonna have to space that radiator back a little bit, but it is possible and I proved here with my rig that you can do it. It's just, none of it's gonna be easy. But again, if you're gonna run more boost, you're gonna run more fuel, you definitely need the intercooler. So guys, I know that was kind of like not a how-to. I hope this information was helpful to you. If it was, leave me a comment below. It's super cold, it's like 20 degrees right now, so I'm gonna get back in the Jeep and head home. But hopefully this video at least gave you a little bit of an idea. Um, oh, one more thing before I, I leave. All I did, um, and I can't show you, but on top of the intercooler, there was like two little tapped uh, holes. All I did was take a piece of aluminum and bend it into an L shape, or actually a, a C shape, like a channel. And I drilled one end for a bolt to screw into the top of the intercooler. And then it's just a shelf that sits on top of the uh, cross member up here behind the header panel. And when I bolt the header panel down, it just pinches those brackets. So like not super elegant, um, nothing fancy, but that's how I mounted that because people are asking about that. Unfortunately, I don't think I have any footage of that. And if I have pictures, I'll put them here, but I am not taking the whole header panel off to show you guys. Just get creative. You don't have to do anything crazy. Don't overthink it. But hopefully this was helpful to you guys. Uh, until next time, stay well, stay safe. See you in the next one.